Only a few things in life come together like music, money, sports, and real estate. They all happen here on the Real Estate Market's number one pulse for all things music, money, and sports. This is the Real Estate Beat. Yes, welcome back to another episode of The Real Estate Beat. My name is Carrie Ann, and I'm with CMG Financial and my mortgage team. Paul Scott here with Keller Williams Sports and Entertainment Division and Next Move Music City. I also happen to play this get fiddle right here out on the road with Low Cash. And I am Andy Lavitri, former washed up NFL player turned real estate agent with Next Move Music City and Keller Williams Sports and Entertainment. We are happy that you're back and you can hear the guitar because with every real estate beat, we kick it off with some fun song that... We try. You do. So, uh, You're one with the song. This, uh, with the songs. With the songs. <laughs> I heard this one on the way in here. And okay. I was like, oh my gosh, summertime's almost over. I cannot believe it. It's that, crazy. that takes out a whole like block of songs that I can, can do for these podcasts. So I better so get true. it in quick. But uh, so one of the times we were out on tour, we got to be on tour with Kenny Chesney and uh, story time here okay. real quick before I head into this song. As every time I hear this song, it makes me think of this moment. Um, our bus is parked next to Kenny's bus. And there's this big, long table full of cocktails uh, or all the things to make cocktails mm-hmm. with and fruits and all of this sort of just, it looked like beach on a yeah, table. Yeah, he like is a, beach. He is, he is. And uh, so I'm just standing there kind of looking at it. And this, this uh, short little bald guy walks off the bus <laughs> and, uh, and he goes, what are you doing? I said, oh, I was just kind of looking at, you know, all the, all the stuff, trying to decide, you know, if I should make a drink or not. And he was like, well... Now you're going to be the bartender. And it was Kenny Chesney. Oh, no way. So he made like, me bartender make- f- for the pre-show for about two hours. Anybody who was walking by his bus, I was bartending for Kenny's uh, people. He put you to work. Uh, he, put me to, he put me to work. So, uh, <laughs> you know, I didn't get to sing this song with him. That would have been more fun. But, fun. you know, at least I got to bartend for Kenny Chesney. Right? There you so, go. Anyway. So cool. Good drinks too. Oh yeah, they were all kind. Hey, if they were, if he bartended, yeah, they were getting some good drinks. <laughs> oh yeah, they might have had a little something in them. <laughs> I ended up with grapefruit juice today somehow. Summertime is finally here. That old ballpark man is back in gear down on 49. I can see the lights. School's out, the nights rolling, man. Just like a long lost friend, I can see in a while. I can help but smile Two bare feet on the dashboard Young love and an old Ford Cheap tades and a tattoo and a you You guys got to say the you-hoo part with me <laughs> <laughs> Bottle on the floorboard Perfect song on the radio And smile cause it's one we know It's a smile, it's a kiss It's a sip of wine, it's summertime Oh, we're almost done with summertime. Oh, endless summer. Gone too quick, for sure. Temperature says it's 9 to 3 down at the deposit and guarantee with that swimming hole. Yeah, it's nice and cold. Bikini bottoms underneath, but the boys' hearts still skip a beat when them girls send me on. Them old cut off. And it's two bare feet on the dashboard Young love and an old Ford Cheap shades and a tattoo and a you Bottle on the floor Perfect song on the radio Sing along cause it's nice and slow It's a smile, it's a kiss It's a sip of wine, it's summertime Sweet summertime. The more things change, the more they stay the same. Don't matter how old you are, but man, when you play the right chords, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Two young feet on the dashboard, young love in an old four, cheap shades and a tattoo, and a you. Bottle on the floor, perfect song on the radio, sing along, 
Cause it's one we know It's a smile It's a kiss It's a sip of wine It's summertime Woo! Sweet summertime Alright, alright, alright Yeehaw, get your summertime on, y'all so well, what did you do this summer? I'm over here playing the air guitar like I'm Paul. <laughs> <laughs> hey, your air guitar was probably about as good as my real guitar on that one because I'm trying to read the chords and sing it all, and I haven't hey. done that song before. That's all right. Hey, I think it was great. It was awesome. I, I, hey, we well have you singing for us is always great. We're ah, grateful for you. I appreciate it. So what did you do this summer? Traveled a lot. Where'd you go? I went out to California. With the kids? Yeah, my and family. your fabulous wife? Yes. We went out to California for... You got to see family? Days. Yep. Saw some family, some friends. Went to Hawaii for a week and then back to California for my cousin's wedding. Okay. And then we came back to Nashville, moved houses. You did? Moved houses. We like packed, moved in like three days. And then before we could unpack, we just loaded up our car and drove to my in-law's house for a week. Okay. Up in Buffalo, New York. Wow. It's a busy summer. And then came back here for... A week, and then we went down to 30A for a week. Your first time, I think, right? First time. Yeah. It was beautiful. You Very got to hot. Yeah, got to experience all the things. I mean, I kind of giggle because we talk about heat in Tennessee summertime. I mean, it's heat in Tennessee fall time. I mean, oh, I'm a yeah. New Englander. It goes all the way through like October. Yeah, I mean, yeah. we could yeah. be at the, at the NFL games and be like 95 degrees, you know, all the uh, things. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't Do you guys experience, things. I know you've been traveling a lot with the, the low cash. Have yeah, so we were just, this summer? yeah, we just went, um, where did we start this past week? Uh, Park City, Utah. We were in Park City, Utah. Nice. Uh, went up to with there. With low cash? Yes, okay. with, with low cash up there in Park City, Utah, and then we went from there to uh, McCall, Idaho, a okay. place I'd never even heard of or been to. Yeah, was it cool? Arguably the most gorgeous place I've ever been on the planet. Love it. It, it was absolutely fantastic. Um, I, can I, do I have time for a short story about that love stop? Your okay, um, uh, so story time with Paul. <laughs> He's tell I, I, it that's the other. <laughs> He was no going to tell it anyways. Yeah, I was going to say it anyway. So <laughs> I, I pour it up, fill it up. So story time with Paul. Um, you have, Jimmy got some background music like some SNL sort of story time with Paul music you can throw in here. So anyway, I got made fun of a little bit on this last run. I'm so sorry. It's very concerning. Change the music. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, the sad thing is you'll find out that music probably fits better than with the story than it should. Um, so You're in Idaho. I'm in Idaho. And bringing you back. Bringing me back. I appreciate it. Bring me back. <laughs> Carries my fishing rod. She's always reeling me back in. There it's great. Go. So um, I, I decide I want to take advantage of this beautiful place mm -hmm. and walk around. It's on a, there's this huge lake there. It's in a national park that we're at. We're at a golf course that we're playing the show on the, on the you know, 18th hole finish of the tournament and all that sort of thing. And so I'm like, I want to walk and see nature, right? It's beautiful. It's 70 degrees, not hot like we were yeah. talking about here. Zero humidity, zero bugs, anything like that. So I start walking. And I, I wanted to get to the downtown spot that was one point miles away. I'm like, all right, it's a good four mile round trip walk. This will be nice, right? Okay. So go to do that. I go 0. 0.6 miles according to Google on my my little walky thing there. And uh, I get to this gate with a dirt road, and there's nowhere to go. This guy comes up on a golf cart, and I was like, do you know how I can get to – I want to just walk to downtown. He's like, well, I got to go check on my boat, so I'm going to go pull up by the lake down, you know, close to downtown. Sure. Do you want me to give you a ride? And I'm like, well – and I had my Apple Watch out. And I'm like, well, this really isn't going to count as steps for me on my outdoor walk. But okay. Sure. <laughs> They'll just think I'm moving really brisk. You know, anytime you can trick the watch to making you think that you're in better yeah. health, it's great. Oh, yeah. So um, so I take the little golf cart ride and we get down to, to the to the lake there. Super nice guy. I get off. I start to you know, thank you, walk away, whatever. And he's like, hey, uh, you know. I, I, I got to make sure this boat works. I don't know what you're doing right now. Do you do you want to go get on uh, on the boat and see the lake? I'm like, normally, like, my entire life, like, you know, don't take candy from strangers, right? You just, and I went, 
Sure. Sounds great. So I went out on a boat what? with a complete stranger. Could have got a pair of cement shoes. And uh, have you we not were, watched Dateline lately? We I haven't. Do that we were out on this. It was great. Okay. We went out on this lake for thirty minutes. He's driving me all around, and 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 I haven't posted the pictures yet. But it turns out he was a real estate attorney. Okay. I started talking about real estate, of course. His son goes to Vandy. Oh, so small world. And he yeah. started showing me all these houses and and what they were for sale for and all of that. And it turned into a whole real estate thing right there. Amazing. So, it, I, I don't know. I, I, I thought this was a really cool story. It is. And I went and shared it with all my bandmates. And they were all like, so you got on a stranger's golf cart <laughs> to get on a boat with a stranger <laughs> And we're gone for an hour and a half when no one knew where you were. This is this is really smart. And Have you told your guitars, kids about yeah, Stranger for, Danger? Yeah. 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 Glad you made so, it to the show, man. Anyway, yeah. why are we talking about this? Oh, the weather was great there. All right, okay. moving on. That's your summer moment in time. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I got to go to uh, back home to New England. That was so fun. We got to go on a whale watch. I Growing up, um, I would do whale watches all the time, and I never uh, got to see any whales. And saw ten, whale. saw 10 oh. whales with a mom and a, and a little baby. So good. What kind so of whales? Fun. Great. The, I don't know. The, Humpbacks? Great. Or I don't whales? know. They were amazing. They were whales. They were legit whales. With were they the tails whales? And all the, they <laughs> were. Dolphins the, just got us. They, were, they had the tails, they all the, the tails. things. <laughs> we're going to go with it. They were amazing. That's and amazing. so uh, then um, ended up in Maine and got to um, have my little one take a sailing lesson. That was so fun. And got to go on a sailboat and have lobster bakes. And oh, lobster. So good there. It was oh, great. Man. It was just a fun uh, moment to kind of go down memory lane, which is really kind of funny. I t- talk about memory lane. So I went to my house where I grew up. 1985 called. Um, and my dad built this house. I was 10 years old. And... Um, I lived there until I graduated to move to Nashville to pursue music. Um, And my mom was there for probably 35 plus years, right? And so she sold this home to this gentleman. I go there to show my daughter the home. And there's somebody on the roof. And I was like, hey, you know, sales 101. I'm like, oh, my gosh, how so are you? So you saw a random person. On the roof. <laughs> and you asked if you could, yeah. No, I just oh, said, hi. I, I used to live in this home. I'm one of the OGs of, of the address. I was about to tell you the address, you know, of the address. And all of a sudden, the owner comes running out, okay, of the front door and says, would you like to see your old home? I was like, absolutely. Why would, why would I not want to come into my old home? I can tell you. Dot, 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 right? Exactly. All the things. And it was amazing. I got to show uh, my little one where I used to grow up and where I would fight with my sister and my brother and all the things. We would have Christmas in this uh, back room. And um, I was like, and this is where we had the games. And this is where he has his alcohol, you know, all his alcohol now. I'm like, oh, there's no more games here. (laughs) (laughs) There's a lot of liquor here. It's still a game. It's just a different kind. Different kind of game. There were probably some red solo cups involved. I love it. And so I, I just saw like the deck my dad built and the... Uh, the fence my dad built because everything was hand built back in the day. Right. I mean, it was old school, like wood. You know, all all the things in the the treehouse he tried to build and the. Uh, that sounds that still there? like me. Yeah. The treehouse there? The treehouse that he tried to build. I feel like that's there. what my kids are going to say when they do their yeah. podcast, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. a few years from now. And they're, they're going to be, and this over here, my dad tried to do this, yeah. and yeah. he tried to he do messed this. Up. Yeah. <laughs> and I showed her the hill. I learned how to ski, which I really didn't learn to ski. I learned to fall. My dad was all about teaching us how to fall early. So it was brought back all these great memories. And so he's like, hey, I'd like to share with you something I, I just had didn't have the heart to paint over. And I was like, what are you talking about? And he brought us uh, to the section of where the uh, downstairs would go to the basement. And it was where all of uh, our... Um, our For gr- all of you in Tennessee, a basement is a part of the house <laughs> that is below the yeah, normal yeah. house. Exactly. We don't have many of those here. We don't because of the clay and That's all right. the things, unless you're in that type of lot that allows it to be a walk-up basement. Right. But up north, we have lots of basements. Um, and it was all of our sizes growing up. And it was oh, like cool. 1989, 1990, 1991. Awesome. It was all the... My brother was literally... You were only like one years old Like then. He was like two, two feet tall. I mean, he still really is. I love him dearly, but he's, he's the shortest of the family. It's so funny. Um, but he kept all that, you know, and it was, I was so nice of him to do that for me. That's you know, it was incredible. a moment in time. I was interesting that he did that for yeah. him, you know, kind of moving on. But um, it was a great memory that we got to experience. That's so much know. better than my story. Your story is great. You went with an interesting... <laughs> 
<laughs> Although you're I will alive, tell you, Paul, you're what alive. he was a really nice guy. His name's Kyle. Listen, Kyle, if you're out there, thank you for the boat ride. There you go. That's so good. So I got to see my old room and all the things. That's so that amazing. was a fun, fun memory um, of that going back home. So um, I love that. Don't you think? You know, kind of reminiscing of of the back times of when things were a little more simpler. Great summers of simpler times. Yeah, we, and the uh, pool I used to jump in every summer. Did you lock? Were you a door locking family when you were growing up? We didn't lock doors at my house, like, like yeah. front doors or bedroom doors. Any doors, doors just didn't. They, yeah, we never locked anything. I don't think either. everybody just came in and out. Like the whole mm-hmm. neighborhood, like all my friends would just come in. Like my kitchen was their kitchen. Mm-hmm. It's just kind of I have friends like that. Up. Yeah, California. Now I do the whole process. Oh, know? now we have security yeah. alarms and and multiple locks. Yeah, all the <laughs> little things. door jam thing to put yeah. in there at night. Oh yeah, it's great. Yeah. But let me tell you, I'm um, talking about uh, summer heat. Um, I have a pool. I don't get in my pool because I don't do pools. But I got in the pool the other day. And oh, my goodness, it's been hot in this town. So oh, hot. It, it is. Yeah. And storms all over the place. It's um, we were actually I was in a tornado uh, la- the previous week on on tour. Uh-huh. Um, and uh, we had to end up canceling the show. We've It's the only show we've canceled this this year. But it was due to a tornado mm-hmm. that came up in like, I mean, it, it came out of nowhere. And uh, the it, the roof collapsed. Mm, Fortunately, really? we got off stage oh, just in time. Oh, before. were you guys on stage? Yeah, we were on stage. Oh, we were trying to get all our stuff. We hadn't performed yet, but we were. They told us get all your gear off the stage. So we went to go get all of our gear that was already set up. And as we were doing it, the the the, the trusses and the speaker system started to fall down, and we had to all just abandon whatever gear was there and no and run off no. the stage. It was and then and then our safe place was this tour bus that just you know is a rectangular box shaking in the wind right. you know not a lot of fun but you know I, i'm we're thinking about that in the moment and then back here in tennessee it's like i don't think there's been a summer with more storms per week yeah. than we've had this summer for yeah, lots reason. and lots of rain there was sure. just a tornado watch like yesterday or two days ago well i don't know my little one was you know in the bed with me because we had a whole lightning storm i mean it was it was right in front of us it was it was right there it would, was, it would was you vivid. say that there's been a shift in the the weather that maybe emulates the shift in the real estate market this summer <laughs> i don't know but you know normally you know in in the summertime right um it is everybody's buying it's a big you know vibrant moment we're really blessed in middle tennessee that so many people are still buying it is a great time to buy yeah. i think this is a huge win for so many you know people we talk about you know interest rates are up they did come down a little bit the other day which i think is a win um, I'd love to shine bright for all of our first-time home homeowners that are out there. I don't know if you realize, but you can get an interest rate. If the rates right now are over 7%, depending upon your credit score, if you were a first-time home buyer with a 640 credit score or above, okay, so first-time home buyer, 640 credit score, you do have to meet the income limits, um, but you could get a first-time home buyer loan under 6%, 5.875. At 640? 640 credit score. Wow. Okay. Five point yes, 30 Whoa. fricks. 5.875. Okay, now let here's let's and there's more. Ooh. But wait, there's, there's more. But there's more. So if you are a police officer and or um, and or if you're somebody that is listening who knows friends who are police officers, who are firefighters, who are volunteer firefighters, who are um, EMT and or paramedics and or veterans. Now, the veterans don't have to be for some home buyers. Guess what your interest rate is? Five and a half. Eh. 5.375. No way. Yes. Wow. This is the time to buy. 5.375. Hello. Like this is not a gimmick either. This is a thirty-year fixed zero. I don't have to buy down piece. anything. No, no. This is because you are who you are, and it's amazing. What Take if I go decide to be a firefighter? Like tomorrow, can I? Yeah, yes. I was thinking Sign about up. doing yeah. that too. Vol- volunteer. <laughs> I might go done, be a firefighter yeah, just so I can buy a you house. You are in a um, a first-time home buyer, six forty credit score. You meet the income limits. Um, and you have the ratio requirements. Now, again, the loan size is 400. They just increased it. So it's 400,000 yeah, or less, which is a huge win because it used to be less. The income limits have increased for the county. This is a huge win right now for those folks uh, that are first-time home buyers and or veterans uh, that are not uh, first-time home buyers. And again, what is the definition of a first-time home buyer? Do you know? Do you know? No, Do you know? The last Do you know? Three Come on, Andy. What you got? Last three years. Okay, that's part of it. That's part of it. 
Okay, here's here's the true definition. It is somebody who has not owned a home or owned a home that they've lived in in the last three, in the last three years. So you right. have could have inherited home by Grandma A or Aunt B, but you never lived in that home. And we would prove that you've been renting for the last three years and you are a first-time home buyer. So that's a huge win for all those that, that are out there. So uh, know that, yes, summertime is shining bright. Um, rates may have ticked up a little bit, but there's options out there for those first-time home buyers. So. And there are still homes on the market that, you know, maybe the last two years where things were, were moving so quickly that as soon as you found it, it was already gone. Yeah. I would say right now, if there was a home you were thinking about before and you're just now hearing this information about that rate, there may be a chance that that home's still available. Correct. And yeah. now you have a chance at a home that you didn't think you were going to have a chance at before due to that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there, you, you just never know. Ask, look up, get with these guys. Um, you know, they definitely ask questions. Ask lots of questions for sure. Yes. So, did we get to Andy's summertime story? We did. Oh, yeah. Travel. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You got, you some, were you got some good stories. Remember, you lost all your equipment? If there's anything I've got, it's stories. <laughs> I was going to say. Well, <laughs> Go on for the days. kids, if you have little ones, are soon to start um, school. Yes. Some of them have already started school. Others, like mine, have not. I'm not sure why they haven't yet. <laughs> My son just started preschool. You're, you're putting them back in school, right? They are going uh. to uh, because we started orientation and then they're off for two weeks. Uh, again. Yeah, my daughter, so, my daughter got to go on to school on Friday for a half day. Yeah, thanks for making our lives difficult. <laughs> the yeah, parents' the transportation takes up right? the rest. Of really, day. you're going to do a half day on a Friday? Okay, cool. That's great. Yeah, but uh, now they're all back this week as well. Yeah, and we're kind of getting through the the swing of things, and um, it's crazy to think that you know so called summertime is over, and Labor Day will be here before we know it. That's so right. That's right. crazy, all the things. But take advantage of what's available for you, especially if you're first time home buyer. Again, if you're not, there's lots of perks out there still that allow you to shine bright within uh, the real estate community. So. so so we're talking about summertime, obviously, but summertime ending leads to fall, too. What what do you typically see in as a lender in in the market of, like, uh, are, are, pe- are lots of people applying for loans in the fall? Or does it taper off a little bit? In real estate, you know, we see things seasonally a little bit in the yeah. fall and winter and have some things. What, what about from a, a lending side? Yeah, I mean, I think um, applications are always um, quite vibrant, but you'll notice that people start making a shift on when they're ready to make the move to truly purchase um, depending upon when they when the kids start school so we'll see that gap right so we'll see it before and then we'll let the kids go back to school and then we'll see it pick up again so that's normally what we see um, you know happening Um, but again being in middle Tennessee I don't ever really see a slow down per se now the market today in 2023 is a lot slower than it was in previous but we are blessed in middle tennessee that this is just a growing area right middle tennessee is from gallatin i think way to columbia right i mean it's such a large um you know spectrum of all the cities within i you know thinking about going back home and we we have one county for half the state you know we've got 20 different counties Counties here, here you know um so it is amazing to know all the growth uh, that we have, you know, all the opportunity that is um, continuing to, to shine bright within Middle Tennessee, which only allows us all to, um, you know, do much more within the real estate community. So there's a lot of, lot to that as well. You know, seasonally, we kind of joked about now it's always kind of hot here, but it, one of the advantages to being a Southern state is that we have a better weather longer and that helps our new construction. Sure. And it also helps, you know, uh, what, when you go into into buying, you, you're not worrying about oh well, it's going to be bad weather. You know, it's maybe not a best time to look at a home kind right. of thing. We have a very small you know uh, percentage of time that you have to worry about that. But um, this is a happening city, and you know I know there's other great cities out there, but um, one of the great things about Nashville is, is not only has its tourism picked up quite a bit, mm-hmm. but um, we've added a soccer team national, yeah. uh, you know, and and so that's brought a lot of things to happen as well. Uh, we do have minor league baseball, of course. We have the Titans. 
some of you may know Andy played for the Titans at one point, and uh, just uh, throwing that plug out there. But um, so, and then of course we have the awesome Predators, um, yeah, who are not you know too many years removed from 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 getting you know deep into the playoffs and 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 bringing a lot of excitement that way. So we have a lot of sports and entertainment all throughout the year that keeps the city kind of cooking. But um, one of the biggest things that we've seen, we've talked a lot about first time home buyers, but another opportunity is investment opportunities yeah. too. Sure. And Airbnb and uh, short-term rentals and those sorts of things in in Nashville has just exploded as one of the na- you know biggest travel destinations throughout the year too. So even if you're looking to have a, a place here that maybe you you know can stay for yourself a little bit, but you want to rent it out, uh, we, we've almost become like beach towns here in that it's a year-round you know short-term yeah. rental opportunities. Yeah, as especially well. if you can buy the houses that are currently in a business, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and they're already zoned. Um, you can pick those businesses up yeah. that allow you that ability to continue to short-term rental it. We're noticing a lot of um, mid-term renters. Uh, Mm -hmm. You know, there's so many amazing um, nurses that are coming to Nashville to... Um, have their contracts, you know, the travel be, nurse industry is yeah. picked up oh, yeah. huge, huge. For sure. yeah, for yeah. sure. So there's a lot of opportunity uh, for you if you are somebody who's looking to be a true investor here in Middle Tennessee, um, and it's not even just downtown, right? I mean, I'm, we're looking at so many different pockets. The other day, we taught a or I taught a, an investor class with another girlfriend of mine, and I mean, the pockets, right? I mean, there's multiples that are just soaring. Um, within this area. So if you are somebody looking to invest, Middle Tennessee is a good place to invest. Well, and one quick thing on that, um, a lot of people who might be listening are like, gosh, man, I'm just trying to get in my first house. They're, they, yeah. you know, and, and, and now they're, they've switched over talking about investors and they hear the word investor and they think that that's somebody that's got to have super deep pockets. Sure. I think of our guest that we had on a, on another show, Jim Patterson, he was just trying to get his first house in <laughs> and uh, you know, he, he may want to invest. Are there programs for people who want to like, own an Airbnb, but maybe don't have the deepest pockets. Yeah. So in that class I taught the other day, there's five different investment types of uh, loan options out there for investors. So you may be a first time home buyer, excuse me, a first time investor, Mm -hmm. uh, which could be that you just were a first time home buyer, right? Now you're thinking, well, now I've got, you know, this under my belt, I'm ready, you know, to continue to rock and roll. I've got a lot extra money. Um, what can I do, right? And so you just need 15% down. We have something called Investment Pro Plus, which grants you the ability for lower interest rates and lower costs because there's there, the world's changed over this last so many months with Fannie and Freddie. Uh, which are the agencies, part of the conventional types of financing that have kind of leveled up all the costs associated and the interest rates. So it allows you 15% down, but I'm able to utilize uh, 75% of the projected rents on this particular home, which gives you the ability to work towards qualification um, and help offset that mortgage payment. So So we're talking future income. You can look at that and use that? Correct, which will definitely help offset that mortgage payment, right? Which would put you in a better position. Now, I can't, if you don't have a history of being a so-called landlord, I can't use any Mm -hmm. extra income, but I can definitely utilize uh, the income to show um, proof that uh, it can offset that mortgage payment and definitely get you towards qualification. If that property had a history, would that help as well? Like, yeah, yeah. So if there's if, current rents already on there, because there's yeah. a lot of mm-hmm. lot of that turnover happening too, where Correct. somebody is selling a, a home. I've I've got a couple clients right now that I'm actively shopping for that basically just want to take over somebody's Airbnb you know, kind of house. They want to be able to have it a couple weeks themselves for the year to come visit, but then they want to be in the Airbnb business. But we've actually looked at revenue of different properties to see so they can project what they're going to, you know, make. Now in that situation, you want to figure out if the house is currently in an LLC. So it's currently a business. So are you buying a business or are you buying a home? So you do want to double check those types of things and working with true professionals will guide you in that direction on how to set that up for success, you know, later. Um, if you are somebody who is self-employed and you can't show any income on uh, tax returns, we have an amazing 12-month and 24-month bank statement loan that allows you to shine bright as an investor. If you're someone who just doesn't want to show 
just any documentation at all <laughs> and or you can't show because of this or that reason, uh, we've got a no doc cash flow loan that allows you to purchase with 25% down. So that's a huge win. And then we've got an amazing first lien um, equity line that focuses on principal before interest. And a lot of our investors who are looking to really level up create that momentum and kind of like build, 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 build that uh, um, just income uh, and real estate uh, wealth. Uh, we're looking at our all-in-one loan for our investors too. So there's lots of options out there. Um, and again, Andy, you speak of hard money too. You know, you may be a first-time investor. You may be a short-term or midterm or type of thing and you're kind of got the savviness of all that or you're just a flipper, right? You're just looking for purchase flip appreciation, right? And maybe um, hard money might be an option for, for those individuals in which Andy can, you know, shine bright on that too. So yeah. all the things. So right. summertime is the way to kind of <laughs> just get out there, uh, you know, create and do and, and learn. Right. Um, and we've been doing all the things. Yeah. You know, when you guys were talking earlier, we were talking about how Nashville is still such a good market. And I was pulling up some articles of just some of these institutional investors that are still buying up properties. Yes, I was just looking at in. an article today. Uh, let me see. It's the Rutledge Hill Culinary Arts District to usher in a new era in Nashville. So they have this huge development in the Rutledge Hill area. You know, there's they're building up a hotel, another hotel in the Gulch and adding condos downtown. There's a fitness location that's going to be added. They're they're going to redo the Rock Harbor Marina right. over. I think it's by Charlotte Park. Uh, I mean, there's just so much going on here, and you know, people are talking about it's a bad time to buy. Well, you're seeing these institutional investors coming into Nashville now and starting to swoop up yeah, some properties. Yeah, for sure. I mean, this is the see, time to buy because yeah. you're going to buy it on the lower side because it is going to change. You know, eventually. You know, they say that the old Nashville. I mean, or Nashville is going to be the old Nashville, right? I mean, yeah. the what we say downtown is going to be on a different side of downtown. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah right. You know? I'm excited so, for that East Bank development. I think that's, that's going what to be they're a talking game about. changer. That's that's uh, I have my eye closely on that. I think that's going mm -hmm. to be. There's a lot of opportunity out there. So if you are somebody who's a first time investor or somebody's just you know into investing. Um, you know, and or just a first time home buyer, right? There's options um, out there for you to take advantage this summer before uh, times change. So it's all investing, whether it yeah. is, you know, whether it's you're doing it for a supplemental income as a business or even for your home, you know, whether it's the first time upgrading your home down, you know, downsizing, whatever that is, it's, it's all a form of, of, Correct. of investing in some way. And I think that the main, you know, takeaway for this is, Whatever you want to do, have the conversation with somebody about it, and there's probably a way to make it happen. Ask lots of questions because, yep. you know, I wish somebody posed more questions to me. I probably would have gone left versus going right. You know, as a first time home buyer, I may have thought being a single gal, I didn't need a single family home, more of a multi unit property, living in one and renting out all the other to right. set myself up for success for tomorrow, maybe the best option. You can do that with very minimal down when working with true professionals. So there's lots of opportunity out there for you, especially um, before summer is over. So. You got it. Tennessee. Yeah. Love it. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we cannot wait to have you come back because you've been listening to The Real Estate, Real Estate B. B. <laughs> <laughs> so Woo! Good.